In summer 2015, a handful of people in Hong Kong rushing through the subway or waiting for the bus were faced with life-sized, most wanted portraits of their own faces. These people were not criminals or terrorists fleeing from justice. So why were their faces plastered all over these billboards? Turns out, the posters were not photographs, but close likenesses of the individual's faces generated by a computer. How were they made? The creators of the posters had gone out and picked up DNA, left behind on bits of litter around the city. Cigarette butts, chewing gum, chocolate wrappers, and run it through a special software. The software used their DNA to recreate the faces of the litterers. The posters were then printed and distributed around the city to shame the litterers. Creepy as this sounds. <laughs> Creepy as this sounds, this was not a mass surveillance operation. It was just a gimmick thought up by ad agency Ogilvy and Mesa to bring attention to littering. But it also served as a vivid reminder to the public. Here's a taste of what private companies can unexpectedly find out about you by casually swiping your biological data. Five years ago, I wrote a story for Wired magazine, where I began digging into what companies had found out about me by tracking my internet habits. I discovered that they had managed to dig up everything from my family circumstances to my weekend plans and my long-term ambitions. Today, this might not come as a huge surprise to you. This is because the business of tracking us around the internet has moved from the domain of obscure data brokers to that of the world's most well-known and valuable companies. Companies like Facebook, Google, Flipkart, and Amazon all trade in the currency of your data, while providing you with convenience, connectivity, and discounts. So in return, giving up your data seems like just a small sacrifice. The economics of data-driven services is simple. Every time you interact with an app, each click is logged and converted into a behavior. Together, these behaviors reveal unexpected things about you, like your tastes in books or music, your hobbies, your politics, the drugs you take, your beliefs. This is then packaged and sold on to retailers, insurers, banks, and many others. You are the product. Going back to the Ogilvy ad campaign, your DNA is one of the most unique forms of data that you still own. It encodes your physical appearance, your personality, your biology. Combine this with other biological characteristics like your face, your voice, and your fingerprint. And together, this becomes your most personalized data set, known as biometrics. It cannot be changed. Once shared, it points exactly back to you. If lost, it allows for irrevocable abuse. And just as we started giving away our behavioral data for free a decade ago, we are starting to do the same with our biological data. Your body is the new currency in the data market. So why does any of this matter? When our internet habits end up in the wrong hands, it can have an impact on unexpected events, ranging from the price of health insurance to university admissions or who wins an election. Your biometric data identifies you for life. It can even extend to identifying your descendants. This is already happening. Every day, like human guinea pigs, we are giving away our data to companies. Take Apple's Face ID, which uses facial recognition to unlock your smartphone and several apps within it. Then there's Facebook, which uses facial recognition to spot photos in the background of images, whether you're a Facebook user or not. This is hardly a fail-safe method. US scientists are able to reconstruct 3D images of a man's face just from his Facebook photos, and were able to fool four out of five facial rec recognition algorithms that they tested. Then there's your voice. 
How many of you own an Amazon Echo or Alexa speaker? So you should all know that these speakers, as well as those made by Google, for instance, can recognize your individual voice. Even startups like SayPay are using voice as a way to authenticate payments for their clients. Your voice can actually reveal some pretty unexpected details about you, like your height, your weight, your personal demographic, or your psychological state. It is already being used for criminal investigations. Samsung recently got into trouble when people found out that it had been secretly recording their voices via their smart TVs in their homes and sending these recordings over the internet, leaving it open to interceptors and hackers. Even your DNA is not safe. GlaxoSmithKline is using the DNA of over 5 million people owned by genetic database 23andMe to develop new drugs. The founder of 23andMe was married to the founder of Google, Sergey Brin. And US dating startup Feramore claims that it can match make the perfect couple using your DNA. To sign up, you have to send in a cheek swab. Pretty unromantic. There are hundreds of gadgets that can track our biometrics daily, ranging from your Apple Watch or your Fitbit to the Strava app. And these collect realms of health data right down to a functioning EKG of your heart. And these gadgets aren't just for adults. They're also available to track and quantify your child from the moment it is born. Biometric tracking onesies, smart pacifiers, and socks can all measure your child's temperature, heart rate, feeding, and sleep cycles. Some apps actually claim that they can measure your baby's heart rate even before it's born. At the next general election, tens of millions of new voters will join the electorate here in India. We already know that tech-savvy youngsters in almost every country are being micro-targeted by political parties using their internet behaviors. And targeted messaging is delivered through social media applications like WhatsApp. Throw their biometric data into the mix. And they, this can be misused to target these voters along the lines of race, ethnicity, caste, gender, or political affiliation. Only now, lawmakers are starting to ask the big questions. How secure are your biometrics? Who owns this data? Who can access it? And what rights do you, as an individual, have over the collection and use of your own data? Unfortunately, the laws are still catching up to the technology. In the US, there are no federal laws. In Europe, a new privacy law is just starting to dig into the question of biometrics. In India, the Supreme Court has ruled that private companies cannot access Aadhaar, the world's largest biometric database. But many of these, including banks and telcos, are still lobbying to retain access. As biometrics continue creeping up, you have to ask yourself a question. Are you willing to make the same mistake twice? Our internet data is already in the hands of companies whose primary motive is profitability. How can we avoid this happening again? We can be cognizant of where the data is picked up. For instance, we could turn off facial recognition in Facebook or decline to use voice recognition with our banks. But this is not enough. As citizens, we need to stand up and demand the safeguarding of our own biological data. Not by a national law limited by borders, but a global set of standards similar to the Declaration of Human Rights. If not for us, then to protect future generations from our follies. Thank you.